jam. Do jam. Cartoons. The final frontier. These are the adventures of the starship Toon Jam. I'm Matt. And I'm Jamie. <laughs> and today you are joining us as we talk about Star Trek Lower Decks. <laughs> We're just going to do that for the whole episode. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, do not fear. That's not going to be the case. Um, yes, we're talking about Star Trek Lower Decks, uh, which is an uh, American adult animated television series created by Mike McMahon for the streaming service CBS All Access, later rebranded as Paramount Plus. It is the ninth Star Trek season or series and was launched in 2020 as part of um, executive producer Alex Kurtzman's expanded Star Trek universe. Uh, Lower Decks is the first animated Star Trek series since the 1970s series, Star Trek the Animated Series, which we have previously covered, so you can check that out over on YouTube. It follows, uh, this show follows the low-ranking support crew of the starship USS Cheritos in the year 2380. I believe that's how you pronounce it, um, Cheritos, but it might be Cheritos. Oh yeah, it might be. I can't remember, I'll be honest. I'm sorry, they don't mention it that much. Uh, they mention it once in the first episode. It's gone. I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, Tony Newsom, Jack Quaid, Noel Wells, or Noel Wells, uh, I should say, and Eugene Cordero voice Lower Decks crew members of the, I'm going with Cheritos, so apologies for that one. Fingers crossed. <laughs> with Dawn Lewis, Jerry O'Connell, Fred Tatiscu, and... Fred T. Fred T and Gillian Vigman. Again, apologies, also providing voices uh, for the series. Work uh, on an animated Star Trek series began in June 2018 with McMahon joining the creator and <clears throat> joining as creator and showrunner by, the, by that October when Lower Decks was ordered for two seasons by All Access. Animation studio Titmouse began working by the following February with the main cast announced in July 2019. Production on the first two series shifted to taking place remotely by March 2020 due to the COVID pandemic. Star Trek Lower Decks premiered uh, in on August 6th, 2020, and its first season ran for 10 episodes uh, until October. A second season is in production and is set to premiere in August. Uh, over here, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. And a third season has also been ordered. So there's plenty going on. And the premise of the show is actually based on a, an episode of Star Trek Next Generation in which um, I believe it's also uh, titled Lower Decks. And it was about the people that worked below decks in the Enterprise. Whereas this is a different ship, as we have said, and mispronounced several times. <laughs> <laughs> um, you may know um, the showrunner um, from Rick and Morty, where he was the head writer um, he has also worked on Drawn Together and South Park, um, as well as a showrunner for the new series, um, which are Solar Opposites on Disney+, Plus, which we have not yet watched. Well, I haven't anyway. I don't know if you've given it a bash, but... Uh, no. No, so there you go. We've not seen that, but he is also a showrunner for that. He is said to be on Rick and Morty, the go-to sci-fi guy in the team. Hence why he got this. He's a big Star Trek fan and a big Next Generation fan, which is when sort of this is set around that same time period. Um, it has a similar animation style to Rick and Morty as well. Um, and fun fact, they used the wiki encyclopedia, memory alpha, and other fan resources to ensure they were staying accurate to the original designs of the era. And the animators watched um, episodes of The Next Generation while they were working on the series. So there you go. Fun fact there. That's, that's me, that's me done. 
<laughs> I think that's everything. That's some good. That's some good information there. Um, have you had you watched this before? No, no. This is the first time going in. I'd heard about it coming up, like yeah, as it was on its way in, um, just because it was animated um, and Star Trek. So yeah. Um, I mean, we've talked about Star Trek before. Obviously, we've done the previous series, the mm-hmm. the original animated series. We've talked briefly about about Star Trek. Well, we've talked not in depth, but not briefly either. I'd say somewhere in the middle about mm-hmm. Star Trek before. So this is our second visit. We've both said how we're fans of the series. You more so of the new stuff. Yeah. Um. So we're both relatively clued in on what goes on in Star Trek. I think, yeah, you you more than me, probably, because I've only really only really dabbled in the, in the newer stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, well, as much as people will tell you that's completely different, it's not too dissimilar. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyway. So you have you have an idea of what Star Trek's all about and yeah. its values, its layout stuff like that so yeah i would say we've we've watched star trek before you've seen the films as well haven't you like some of the yeah yeah okay well um as far as reception before we start talking about twitter Mm -hmm. um i will tell you that on rotten tomatoes the first season holds a 67 percent approval rating with an average of 7.5 out of 10 based on 45 reviews the site's critical consensus reads Fun, this is a quote, uh, but not very bold. Lower Decks flips the script on Star Trek regulation just enough to stand out in the franchise, if not the greater animation landscape. End quote, which um, Metacritic, which uses a weighted average, uh, gives a score of 59 out of 100 based on 17 reviews, uh, indicating mixed or average reviews. So there you go. It's 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 a generally above above middle, like a, a, a high shaky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you take sort of so sixty seven percent of Rotten Tomatoes, we've seen much higher, we've seen lower. <laughs> we've seen too high most of yeah. the times. <laughs> um, here's one: Arab News described the series as taking a uh, more comic approach uh, than other Star Trek adaptations. Uh, it said the the show gently gently mocks uh, many of the series tropes and argued that the visual style is safe and familiar, but is far from breaking new ground as an adult animation. So there you go. That's that's that kind of sums up that sort of percentage. We're looking close to seventy percent on average if you add all of those sort of things up. What's Twitter saying? Um. Yeah, Twitter seems to be about about the same as far as like it's fairly mixed. Um, I mean, <clears throat> with something like Star Trek, you're going to get a lot of back and forth um, <laughs> because obviously there's, you know, many seasoned fans <laughs> that have been watching for a long time. Um, and then you've got these new people that are just approaching for the first time. Um, <clears throat> and Twitter is, you know, the Wild West when it comes to uh, opinion. So uh, <laughs> they, they're kind of all melding together. Um, so we've got um, Port Mantoni says, hey, this Star Trek Lower Deck show is pretty great. Which, you know, yeah, fairly, uh, fairly positive. Pretty, just a thumbs up review. Yeah, I mean, I like the way that he starts with just like, hey, like it's just a casual conversation. Yeah, like, hey. You know, like he's just, you know, eating a slice, <laughs> you know, uh, it's just outside, at, uh, at, you know, in s- somewhere sunny and someone walks by and he stops and he's like, hey, this Star Trek Lower Decks show, it's pretty great. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for that, Paul Mantoni. Um, on the other side, we've got uh, B. Grey Wolf who says, um, I wanted to like Star Trek's Lower Decks, but it feels too derivative of Final Space, which is uh, a different show that has a pretty much identical sort of look. Um, And it falls kind of flat for me. Um, Can't say I watch Star Trek for the wacky hijinks. So not a fan. Be Grey Wolf. Okay, well, I mean, 
that's a fair thing. You've got to think about that as a, you know, when you're making a Star Trek show, mm. um, that everyone has gonna is gonna have their preconception of what it is. Yeah. Um, and no matter what, I guess in this situation, it's gonna in some way break that preconception. Yeah. Um, but you have to do it in a way that I guess keeps people happy. Mm. So that's interesting. That, that, so that's someone that you know is clearly someone that has watched Star Trek. Yeah, enjoying it. Um, we've got uh, Nano Aubrey who says I had basically given up on Star Trek until Lower Decks. Oh, so that's the converse. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lower I wonder Decks. if I mean we've it, there's no background on that on what they is there a Star Trek that they liked before this? Mm. Or were they Maybe. just, I don't like Star Trek in general. Yeah. Now Maybe they, they only liked the original animated series and then it's all <laughs> been down now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's matched up to that high, yeah. high dialogue action. <laughs> and I'm finally back in with something that's nothing <laughs> like it. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never but this know. is it. Like, there's, the thing is, it, it's a it's a brand. Well, it's a brand. It's a franchise that's been going on for so many years now that you you got so many different people in on it, and you know you can't please everyone. So yeah, it's, it's, like it's going to be years, some people's cup of tea, and it's really not going to be other people. It's just how it goes, really. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we've got um, Dirk Eric Schultz who says, "I don't have problems with lower decks in itself." I have a problem with how uncreative it is and how hard they try to keep Star Trek alive with watering down the concept and reducing it to a brand. Next step might be Star Trek babies. <laughs> 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 Which, uh, <laughs> as we know, babies is like, you know, the ninth ring of you know, hell as far as branding goes. That's like, you know, the the end final boss as far yeah. as like there's just no help there's no turning back from that um, oh man yeah, that, babies. i wasn't expecting that that was a that was a well laid out tweet it was yeah well laid on that one no. <laughs> that's tickled me um okay so yeah that's that's a pretty uh i would say like what was not those were all very you know i would say even the ones that you know where they didn't like it they had a reason for it yeah which is nice. Um, that's what we like here at Toon Jam. <laughs> yeah, you know, we like the hate, reasons. <laughs> then as long as you've got a reason, well, you know, that's fine. Yeah. So that's cool. Okay. Um, well, okay, let's start talking about what we thought of it. It's that moment um, that you've maybe you've been waiting for. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you listen. Hopefully. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, so sort of what what was your sort of first impression? You've got that first bit, um, and it kind of introduces your uh, two of your main characters, mm -hmm. um, just just two people working below decks. One of them is a by the books, by the books Starfleet wannabe. Mm -hmm. The other is a bit tired of the whole thing and is just messing around. Yeah. What where what where does that leave you? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I I felt that like that was a pretty pretty fair place to kind of start things from. Like, I mean, it's I think the weirdest part is just that there is somebody that wants to mess around. Down there. Yeah, like you've never really seen that before. Well, I haven't anyway. Like someone's no, just no. like having a laugh down there. Just you know. That's it. I mean, to be fair, I've not seen the original Lower Decks episode, mm. but I think it's a fair estimation to imagine that it's not that ridiculous yeah you know? yeah the the idea isn't ridiculous i think we've just ne we've never seen that no, I've never i mean like it's, I, what i mean by that is um the characters aren't that ridiculous in the way that this was like obviously a comedy thing mm. but she's just like absolutely just messing around yeah I, I can't imagine there's that much of that in that episode yeah if there is it's not that extreme <laughs> it's not slicing someone's leg open playing with a a Klingon, you know, blade thing. I can't remember what they're called. Apologies. Yeah. 
but yeah it's it like it, it made sense to be like oh okay this is a this kind of makes sense as a setup like because you know the we've got the the by the books character is that's kind of what we're we used to see in pretty much all the time like i imagine that's what a lot of people go into star trek for for like trying to solve you know they've got they've got a different way of you know getting to a conclusion a lot of the time you know it's like you know this logic and diplomacy and whatever and you know we try and do things by the books and follow the rules and whatever and still we get a, a nice outcome which is essentially you know the fact that we're still alive in the future <laughs> Um, so the by the books person seems pretty Star Trek in, in mm. a sense. Um, so the curveball is um, the other character who is like immediately just getting wasted on some sort of like alien yeah. beverage and like using things, using weapons in ways that they shouldn't be used. Um, yes. Yeah. So, so you've got just for these characters. So the by the books one is Brad Boimler. Right. Boimler, uh, yeah. Ensign Boimler. And then we've got Beckett Mariner. Mm. So Mariner mm. is is the is the crazy one, so to yeah. speak. So yeah, I, I mean I was like, yeah, that this this makes sense what they're doing. Um but I think the wackier for, for me, like as it sort of progressively got wackier, it was like I, I'm not used to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it, that was... It's one of those things, isn't it, where it almost if it didn't have Star Trek on it, you mm. would think nothing of it. No. But it has got Star Trek on it. And it takes a moment almost like to just come to terms with it. Mm. Because you're kind of you kind of in the right where it's like, is this is this canon? Yeah. Is this actually real? I, I mean I'm I'm guessing not, but I don't know. It, yeah, and I, I mean, it's strange because obviously um, Mike McMahon's come from Rick and Morty, which is like essentially a way of doing this without attaching a brand to it. So yeah. like you get to do all the crazy sci-fi stuff that you want to do and like you, you've got no legacy of fans that you're going to upset in the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, it's his. He's obviously a big fan and stuff, and wants to get in on it and that. But I mm. mean, it it just it seems like a risky move <laughs> to then take that that sort of um, level of absurdity and then bring it into something that's you know kind of known for not having that. <laughs> yeah, and essentially, well, it's just like, things like like obviously, um, it's one of those things where it it, it affects all levels, like the the humour affects mm. all levels of the ship yeah. so you know the you've got like the whole thing in the bridge some of those characters are pretty ridiculous in their own right mm. um and they they're it's like it's like we said in sort of the previous review section that that kind of point where it makes fun of the tropes of star trek mm. um and that's that's sort of that's part of it um i'm just reading now that it apparently it is canon oh really um Apparently, this is according to uh, McMahon himself. Mm. So I don't know. I think it's one of those things where I, it's possibly not set yet as a yes or no answer right, right now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're probably not. Maybe if it continues to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you've got those when you've got those people high up and people that you've seen in Star Trek um being like ridiculous or just humorous in that way mm. you know you wouldn't see that in a proper you know star trek show yeah and i guess that's when people kind of it's harder to swallow because mm. it's like well if we saw these in the show it'd be weird yeah you know I mean, it, it would be really weird i think the the, the pace of it as well like is it's so fast like everything's pretty crazy and you know yes yeah. it's, it's very like on fast forward i mean it's... in this episode alone we get like you know we, we travel to different places i mean obviously that's pretty star trek anyway but i mean like yeah. we we do a whole like traveling thing and then we've got like an outbreak on the ship and then we're like introduced to pretty much every ship quarter like 
yeah. a bunch of characters. Um, you know, it, there's there's a lot going on, and it all happens so fast, like mm-hmm. multiple alien attacks, and like <laughs> you know something that like you'd probably lead up to with a few episodes of, of actual stuff. Yeah, but you can kind of get away with it in in the comedic sense that mm. you know you just put it down to it's done for a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, I guess, that's the the beauty of a comedy. You can get away with more, like, you know, crowbarring more things in your episode. Yeah. Um, especially animation comedy. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, taking full advantage of the fact that it's animation and yeah. you didn't have to, like, you know, break all the budgets for one episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because there was loads going on visually as well, like, yeah, people turn into these weird zombie things throwing up like tar or something you know, <laughs> yes <laughs> you know biting chunks off different people and mm. um and i think one of the big sort of things that makes it feel almost like breakneck pace is the dialogue yeah the dialogue's got a very there's a there's a lot of dialogue said very fast mm. uh, which is not not it, it's not like they're you know feeding you loads of information fast it's just part of you know the joke almost yeah it, it's all non-consequential but it's fed at you fast and it, it's very much like a great example of that is rick and morty yeah you know and it's that it's done in that same way you can tell you can tell that it's a similar thing can't you oh yeah um th- th- i mean just i guess while we're hanging on things that we didn't really like about the show um I would say the art style is one of them. Mm. Um, and, and it is such a good point, like having raised it before anyway, it didn't feel very original. No. Um, and when you've got something like Star Trek, it kind of has to have its own look because it's Star Trek. Yeah. You, you've got to be able to know this is a Star Trek cartoon. And if they weren't wearing the unit, it, it, it like, what was the other one mentioned earlier? Final Space. Final Space. It look it does look exactly the same, doesn't it? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Like so, especially there's like a cat character that comes in later on that I thought was from Final Space. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it I guess it's sort of yeah, it's the same as that. It looks a bit like Rick and Morty, mm. but more general. Um I know there is a new we've talked about it between ourselves, there's a new um animated series for star trek coming out mm. that cg does look far more original mm. so maybe that will sort of set a precedent in that respect yeah uh, but again i guess when you have as soon as you see this art you know what kind of show it's going to be mm. so in saying that it perhaps isn't original enough equally it gives you more of an idea of what you might be getting and in a star trek world that might help people you yeah, know, I guess that's something it. to be said about the the sort of like the trends in in art styles in the yeah. fact that like I mean a lot of people have a big issue with certain styles and what what that might sort of like the connotations of what the show might be yeah. um, and but I mean I guess it is sort of like a you know it's a suggestion it's very yeah <laughs> in itself just to look like oh yeah this is probably going to be like that other show that looks exactly like this so yeah. I mean, I guess yeah, it's a it's a good way of leading people um, to what what they're gonna get, which which might sort of adjust expectations a little bit. Um, because that's what it that's what this show needs. It needs you to adjust your expectations. Yeah, yeah, like massively. If you've just come from like you know binging all of Star Trek up until yeah. this point. Because <laughs> so I, I like I say I've not watched this yet, um, and I've been a bit complacent about watching it. Mm. Uh, I wanted to watch it because it was Star Trek, but equally, I I saw the trailer, I saw this sort of humour, and I was a bit like, Ugh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to like it, mm. I feel like it's just going to ruin it. Um, but, see, like, I had a preconception of what it was going to be instead of Star Trek, mm. which, though for me, it might have been a bit of a put off. For some people, it, I think it's worth doing just to help people realise. Because I didn't go in thinking like, yes, a new Star Trek series. Mm. I knew what it was going to be. Yeah. Um, but I will say this, it has more Star Trek to it than 
the trailers at least led you to believe mm. um, it felt like when they were advertising it they weren't trying to advertise it to a star trek fan yeah like which crowd. might have been the case yeah yeah because they might have just been like well if fans are going to like it they're going to like it if they, they'll watch it because it's star trek anyway mm. um and then they're probably just not going to like it so we might as well market it to the people that we think will like it yeah and I mean, that is, is something that Star Trek has been doing pretty successfully for, for yeah. a while now, is like garnering a new audience. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I suppose with the films, the new films was like a big one, wasn't it? Yeah. They they changed Star Trek and there's loads of people that before those films were like, Ugh, do not want to see Star Trek. That's not, it, it's so boring, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Saw that, changed their minds. Mm. And then you've got Discovery and, and this was a huge like divisive series yeah they and they just kind of went but this is what star trek should be now Mm. and when you look at the social change that's taken place from even just now since like since discovery and this the series that came before which is enterprise yeah is it's massive like we've gone through so many changes we've talked about it a few times with like obviously you know inclusion and things like that Mm. So, yeah, it's going to be very different because, like, Star Trek is always, you know, trying to be ahead of the curve when it comes to acceptance and those kind of ideals. Yeah. So it was a huge change, really, in the series. And a lot of people didn't get on board with it. Mm. So then they have to all of a sudden be like, well, okay, we need to market this for the people that are going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. And the the inclusion thing as well, like that's that's kind of like you know that is part of like the Star Trek philosophy, right? Like, isn't that something that like you know like Roddenberry was campaigning for that like yeah, yeah. the the issues between humanity wouldn't exist in that time in the time that Star Trek yeah was, yeah and stuff like that. So like you know all that stuff is you know it's it's very much it's in the beginning it's not like we've just people have just started adding it now <laughs> just yeah. like oh it's the 2021 version so everyone's on phones like yeah yeah <laughs> i think it's to do with sort of obviously with it being around for so long with that being the main thing mm. it, it tends to be and then this, this is this is generalizing i apologize if we you know offend anyone but it tends to be the older generations that find it harder to get on board with sort of newer ideals which mm. makes sense you know because they've lived in a different world really yeah um but obviously there's older generations that are a big fan of star trek mm. um and it's like how far does their scope go in the way of acceptance mm. because it's just strange to them at a certain degree yeah um I, I, that's i mean it's just a an idea behind it but that, i think that has something to say and that's why now it's it because it's gone so far forward mm. there's a lot of people that it's gone beyond what they can accept almost yeah which i mean it's kind of strange because obviously you know it's a show about like alien life forms and stuff like yeah. that <laughs> which is like they're completely on board with but like the yeah. actual human side of it is like just too much <laughs> i know i think it, it it sort of it like the show evolves, doesn't it? Mm. Like the the series, the franchise evolves, um, and different people like different things about it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it might be that someone's like, I just really like space aliens and ship battles. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they have a bit of this in every now and again, but I can accept that. And then when when it goes so far forward, they're like, I, I didn't mind it before, but now it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, you know, condoning that or, at all, but, you know, I can understand the the aversion in some in some ways. Mm. Um, but that being said, I've really enjoyed all the new stuff and I think yeah. they should be doing that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it made a it made a point in, in this show, actually, like when they were talking about how um, like they were saying that a lot of the characters are basically obsessed with rank like yeah. how rank is like the hierarchy there now or whatever which it, it does sort of make you think like would that replace everything else as far as like 
you know because it's like you know race and gender and everything like that's all kind of out the window at this point so like is rank the new thing that's like oh no that's all <laughs> yeah. that's the oppressor the hidden oppressor now well this is the thing i mean the trouble is when you look at starfleet and you know those ships they are military operations yeah um i do think that's one thing in in the sort of the new series it, it's almost like they aren't treating it anymore like a a military like mm. thing, and rather going down some like a different a social it's like a social group like like when you yeah. watch discovery they're more like a group of mates that run a yeah. ship um which i don't know if that's something to, i mean you've got to think when the original star trek was made it was like what not too long after the war mm. um after the second world war obviously it was a while afterwards but a lot of the people i mean a lot of people in it had been in the war and mm. things like that and then the writers and people would have known it and and things like that it would have been much closer so those kind of things were more familiar to them whereas you know current generations you know there's obviously there's people that have been in war but west the western world the majority of people haven't been involved in in war yeah and d didn't you say that um uh, like the the you know the bridge and stuff is all based around like a submarine or something yeah so gene roddenberry used to work on on a submarine and that's where he got sort of all it that's how he knew all about it and stuff and that's basically yeah it's it's run like a submarine you know you've got your captain it's it's basically yeah. an evil vessel so yeah that i mean ranks like a massive thing on a submarine as well isn't yeah. it? like i only know this because i watched this other show about submarines and <laughs> 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 they but were constantly like calling each other yeah. like like co and whatever yeah. like it's just all like the rank based names and stuff and i was yeah. like oh, okay this is weird <laughs> so uh, and that's kind of like why so that's i think people are sort of moving away from that with it and you mm. know for better or for worse or whatever that's another reason it's changing i suppose um it's pretty interesting but to go back to sort of this um yeah it, it still has i think a feel of star trek mm. um it's pretty it's pretty like accepting of of all it has that part of it it's not as present maybe as in the live action stuff yeah. um, as in the storyline at least in the first episode the storyline did not you know adhere to that as a as a main thing but often the first episodes don't mm. um but it still has that sort of vibe you know you've got sort of a, a diverse group of characters a diverse cast um so that's still part of it uh, the music felt very like the soundtrack was very star trek mm um and that's i think that grounded it quite a lot in the star trek sort of things you know sort of the odd just little tune between scenes and things like that yeah i, I was really just, glad there was a nice theme to it as well yeah because yeah, i mean we've discussed before sort of the discovery theme is a bit oh, it's not it, got it's, it's not got the the punch of a star trek no it, it's like the one thing that discovery lacks in for me is lack of theme yeah <laughs> Like it, it just sounds like you're in the middle of like an NCIS episode. Yeah, <laughs> so. and that's the trouble. It's it's not necessarily that it's bad. It just doesn't have a a note yeah. of tune. Like you couldn't hum it hum it now, could you? No, no. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't even know if they're like, actual like notes <laughs> or yeah. whether it's just like the clinks of you know <laughs> like a, a a boiler glass or yeah uh, a Bunsen burner because it's very like scientific, isn't it? Like I can see what they were going for. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a, but it, it doesn't it doesn't fill you with the same, you know, like when you hear the older themes and you're like, oh man, I'm yeah. so so ready to explore the universe right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> but this does have that, and it does have that sort of feel about it as well. You mm. know, it kind of it's the it's it's what brings you back to the fact that it's a Star Trek show. Yeah. Uh, I think it really pulls you in, like, oh yeah. Um, and it's cool because you've got all the the species and stuff like that. It does play with them yeah yeah I, I yeah i like that they, they did more with that because that's something i think um you don't see enough of almost like a yeah. lot of the time at star trek because you get you know there's a lot of stuff on on board 
Um, and, you know, usually it's like one race at a time because, you, you know, they're visiting a particular planet yeah. or whatever, dealing with those guys and then they move away. So it's sort of quite steady, whereas this, it really mixed things up straight away. You got yeah. to see a lot of stuff, which, again, I, I guess is part of the fun of, you know, having the, the animation. You can just take it wherever you want. That's it. Quickly you you want, all, so. all the sort of biggest, weirdest races and chuck yeah. them there at once. Um Whereas that might just be like some like a, a special episode or something. Yeah, yeah. They do tend to do it. I, they, they, I think they are trying to do it more, and they do mm. do it quite a bit in other sort of shows and stuff. Um, but it is just nice to see more of them more often, mm. uh, which is cool. Um, yeah, all right. I mean, we've we've discussed in length some. Some, some good Star Trek stuff there. I don't want to go on too long. So shall yeah. we go on to our reviews? You've seen new sciences with Discovery. You've traveled time with Picard and beyond. But now it's time for a new Star Trek with an even newer crew. Star Trek babies. Oh, <laughs> Star Trek babies are all your favorite Star Trek characters, but even cuter. Check out tiny, cute Jean-Luc Picard. Milk, baby formula, hot, make it slow. <laughs> it's little cutie, Lieutenant Worf. It's a good day to cry. <laughs> tiny, tiny spark. Net one and prospered. It's little angsty, Dr. Bones McCoy. Join it, man. I'm a baby, not a doctor. And cutie patootie, seven of nine tuplets. Changing nappies is futile. Star Trek babies. They're the newest generation around. Star Trek babies. Shum shum a boo a woo ha boo boo. Okay, so here at Toon Jam, we have a three-point rating system that goes as follows. Uh, thumbs up, make it so. Uh, thumbs down, resistance is futile. And shaky middle, it's a good day to die. Mm. Um, so, hmm, yeah, <laughs> when is? <laughs> All right. Uh, so good, bad, uh, in the middle in the middle not yeah yeah okay okay yeah whatever uh so okay star trek lower decks your mm. thoughts yeah i mean it's there, there's so much about it that's familiar um from you know this the style of animation uh, you know the art and the you know the the way the dialogue flows the sort of the, the pace of the show, like the, the sort of madness and so it all feels very familiar if you have watched, you know, shows like Rick and Morty. Um, the, and I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're really into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did really like the earlier stuff of Rick and Morty and actually even the later series was pretty good. Um, so, you know, with, with that stuff uh, aboard, um, if you enjoy that stuff, it's, it's, it's going to be a pretty easy ride, I think. Um, for Star Trek folk, they're used to a bit more of a, you know, a serious kind of show with a, a bit more of, you know, a steadier pace um, with probably more, I guess, thought out <laughs> uh, problems and solutions, then this is probably going to be a real shock to the system. <laughs> and, and for me, I know that like I, I particularly pick up Star Trek because um, it it does things that other other shows don't. You know, like that the, the kind of pace that they have, the way that their characters tackle things, it is different from you know anything else. Like so many things that you know shoot first, ask questions later, and mm. Star Trek doesn't do that. So it it did feel kind of weird to me that. <laughs> That, that we'd we'd kind of changed everything almost it seemed um about it but uh you know it was still made for a pretty fast-paced and, and fun animation i just it, I, I i almost feel like it could do without being star trek um <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's 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 just sort of how i felt about it in the end like and, and we already have that that's the thing is like if they did this first and then went on to do rick and morty it, it almost makes sense 
but doing it the other way around seems like oh man i feel like we've just kind of bombarded something else yeah. with, with our style and whatever it seems a bit strange so for me i think it's going to be a it's a shaky middle because i mean you know it's not a it doesn't make for a terrible show we've watched worse stuff than this <laughs> well, at least they understood what was going on and you know it was fun i wasn't bored um it just doesn't feel like again like what i go into star trek for personally um yeah and it, it you know it didn't give me all of those things either like you know I, I wasn't thinking at the end like pondering over like oh that's a really weird yeah like a, what a strange concept and like how <laughs> like i wonder how we would tackle that if we ever approach that in the future it was just more of like as soon as the credits rolled that was it <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah okay um well i um obviously i i was a bit concerned going in um as i've said i didn't know well i mean I, the trouble was i felt like i knew what to expect um and that was what concerned me i was worried that it would just be some sort of like you know it's just basically got the name star trek on the front of it and mm. it's just some daft comedy um but i was actually pleasantly surprised there was enough in it to still feel star trek enough mm. for what you're getting because obviously you know you're not going to get the same experience um i think if you if you accept it if you're a star trek fan and you accept the idea of it then there's plenty in there for you and it, yeah. and it isn't necessarily laughing um at you at star at you and at star trek sort of thing it yeah. is laughing with it you can tell it's made by someone that is actually a fan of star trek yeah. um and, and like i say the you know they obviously did a lot of research and the, i mean the guy knew his stuff anyway i think um and i imagine it's one of them shows that, that also sort of finds its groove a bit more and probably will feel more Star Trek as it goes on. Mm. Um, we only watched the first episode, as always, so that kind of just goes with that. But I do feel like it would probably go on. And that being said, I will watch more. Huh? Um, my my interest has been piqued. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by it. That's what I'll go with. Maybe it's because my expectations were low to start with that's it um, the best maybe, way to see. Yeah, yeah maybe that's why but i don't know i i think um i yeah i enjoyed it i thought it was pretty funny um still had the sort of base underlying foundations that a star trek show should have mm. um whilst it i mean it was different enough it was different but not necessarily in the worst way i i think a lot of it is just understanding and i think this is the case with a lot of things now understanding that you can have something that's like what you know but made for a different purpose sort of thing yeah. so this is a comedy rather than you know what we're used to yeah you know that's how i guess the the idea of a franchise is to bring in as many elements as you can yeah you know when you've got all this stuff why not use it and it takes away zero from the show that, that i mean it's not like we're going to see a, a live action series that's completely this mm. so oh, are we? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I mean, that's possibly what the orville is i've never watched the orville but i hear things i hear things in the works man <laughs> yeah but yeah so one up one middle mm. not bad pretty good rating yeah um what about what about you at home what did you think you can let us know on the three ball cubes of the internet facebook instagram and twitter at tune jam pod um let us know what you thought of it maybe you agreed maybe you disagreed um we want to know we want to know uh, if you want to hear more you can head over to our patreon which is um bit.ly no no wait no that's the shop um yeah. apologies it's patreon.com forward slash toon jam pod obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but if you want to get some merchandise as well that's bit.ly forward slash toon jam shop yeah. um you can also catch um our, loads of our old episodes on youtube um just search for toon jam podcast i guess yeah and we're on there and it, we've got a whole back catalog check them out um but i guess all that's left to say is 
thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed today's episode and i hope you will join us again next week for more toon jam goodness and until then you stay jammy hey everyone thank you for listening if you want to help the show keep going you can be extra jammy by heading over to our patreon page at patreon.com slash toon jam pod here you can get a shout out on the show or unlock bonus episodes Ratings and reviews anywhere you listen to the podcast also really help us out. So thank you and stay jammy.